Guys, 8 Squid here and welcome to another Playmaker uh, in Unity tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be doing mouse aiming and shooting. So I've made a video before about how to shoot and aim. Um, I'll leave a card in the top right um, for you if you want to see that one. But in this one, we're going to be using our mouse to aim and shoot. So we're going to uh, jump right into it. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. So I've got a very basic scene here. I'm just using this little red rectangle to represent my character. Just because to make it easier for people to understand. Because like, if I'm using a different kind of character, um, <clears throat> you know, it may be confusing for some people. But uh, just to make it simple. So on here. It's just my player, tagged as a player, color. Got my rigid body, gravity scale set to zero. Rotation is frozen on the Z axis. And then I've got a box collider and a basic movement FSM, which is this one here. Getting the horizontal axis, storing it here. Um, getting the vertical axis, storing it there with a multiplier of five on both of them for the speed. And then Using the translate here, I just need to set these, player X and player Y. So that will have my player moving. Um, if you want to know how to do the movement, um, I'll leave a, a card as well in the top right um, for you for that one. So basically, if I hit play now, my character should move around normally. Wait for this to finish uh, compiling, assembling. Okay, so you can see there, I can move around using the uh, keys. So on this one, I've only got it set up for the arrow keys. But if you haven't messed with any of your settings for inputs, it will work with the A, S, W, and D key. Okay, so let's get our character shooting. So what we're going to do is we are going to put our weapon into the scene. So in this case, I'm using this here. So let me drag it out. So I'm just using this very basic little cannon I drew before. It's not the nicest looking. Make it a bit bigger. Now, <clears throat> in general, let me set it back to how it was. So normally, when you put like your weapon on the scene, you're going to have the move tool here. And if I switch to rotate, it's going to rotate like that. And that's obviously not how we want the cannon to rotate, because the pivot point is in the wrong place. Let me set that back to zero. OK. So to fix this on our sprite here, we need to go to pivot and choose in this case, I want the left. So it depends on where you put it. Okay. And also how your sprite looks. So you're best having the image face the way you want it to start. So originally my cannon is facing up and I just rotated the image this way. So then I want to set my pivot point to the left. So I'm going to set it to the left here. Click out and click apply. Okay, and now if I grab it, you'll see the pivot point is here. And now it's going to rotate around that way. And that's what we want. So let's put it next to our player. And for now, we're going to put it there. There could be an issue with it being linked to the player. But we will see if we come to it. And to fix it, it's not that hard. Okay, and then on the cannon, we're going to want to add an empty object, and we'll call it fire point. And I'm going to give it a tag just to make it to see. I'm going to pop it just outside of there. And we don't need to have um, anything on the cannon, really. It's a weapon, but just a fire point there. <clears throat> okay. So now if we hit play, 
the cannon will move with our player because it's a child object of our player. So there we go. Now, we want the cannon to actually obviously rotate. And to do this, we want to use the mouse. Now, it, it's not the... How to say? Um, it's maybe not the uh, best thing with Playmaker. It's a bit weird how it works. Try and get that to uh, be... There we go. That one. Okay. Um, so there's a few things we need to do. So first, let's get the cannon aiming. Now, to do this, we are going to want a separate object. So we're going to create a 2D game object. In this case, I'm just going to use a circle. Okay. I'll pop it here. I'll make it a bit smaller. Okay. I'll leave it white. Now, you probably want to change this. You could, this could be like your crosshair. But uh, you want to change it. But in, just for the simplicity, we're going to leave it as a circle here. Okay. Um, and I'm call it... Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Let's call it cross... That was terribly wrong. Get rid of that. Okay. So... We need this to move separately. Now, you're best checking in the project settings under Input Manager. We're going to be using the mouse X, mouse Y. So you want to make sure this is all set up properly. If you haven't messed with anything, you'll be completely fine. But otherwise, you want these settings here. For the X. And this one for the Y. Okay, I need to remember the name exactly. So capital M for mouse, space, and a capital X, same for the Y, except it's a capital Y. So now we need to get our crosshair moving. So we're going to add an FSM and call it movement. Okay, and we'll call it move as well. And this is going to be nearly identical to the movement. So we're going to want a translate, and we want to get two get axis. Okay, and we're going to have mouse x, and we can say it's try five for now, and we're going to store that in mouse x, and then we want mouse y, multiply of five, and we're going to store that in a new variable mouse y okay let's collapse them and then on here we're going to set to mouse x and mouse y okay and let's hit play now this is where one thing is going to go a little bit weird and we will sort this later so this could jump away it could stay there so it's jumped away if we look at where my crosshair is, you can, you can see it moving. But uh, obviously, its position is not where we want it to be. But it is working, and we will fix that in a moment. So now we want our cannon to aim at it. So let's get that working. So we're going to add an FSM. Let's call it aim. Okay, and again, aim, <clears throat> and we're going to add a look, I think it's look at, yep, okay, and we have that, and we're going to tick debug line, because it's going to actually show us our debug line, okay, and then we vector free target, so we want to get a target, now we're not going to be using that we're going to be using vector two and we need to do a new fsm on our crosshair so we're going to add a new fsm and we'll call this one um or we want to use a get position 2d and we'll call it is get 
get POS. Get POS FSM. And we're going to store that in a vector 2. Call it a crosshair POS. Okay. And we want that every frame. So now we'll do that to the cannon. And we're going to choose that there. Target. And then set that to be our crosshair POS. And let's just zoom out here and hit play. And let's see if this will work. All right. So obviously now we have a problem if you look at our cannon, how it's very skewed. Now, this is because... You can see the cannon is aiming, but it's very weird. This is because our cannon is a child of um, the player. So to fix this, let's drag that out. We're going to add another FSM called player follow. Okay. And uh, we're going to use a move towards <clears throat> FSM. Okay, and obviously target game object. Let's just put our player in here. Uh, finish distance one, max speed that. And let's just test it. We may need to mess around with that. But we'll call it player follow. We'll hit play. So, as you can see now, it, it's okay there, but it's not following the player. So, let's try saying finish distance zero, and then hope it will comp always happen. If not, we can just add an event to make it just loop back. And there we go. You see, the cannon is following the player. And we move, and the cannon is aiming. Now, obviously, it's a bit weird how it's doing it, the position of the cannon. So, if you want, you could set to move 0.5. Mess around, see how it is. To get where you want the cannon to be. So, like that. But obviously, it's not going to follow us anymore. So if that's a case, we can just do a, a transition finished. Add that to there. Hopefully, this will then allow it to follow us. Finish. And then do a wait. And let's set that to 0.03. And then finish. And let's see if that will now follow us perfectly. And there we go. Uh, the only problem is it doesn't look exactly the smoothest. So it is maybe best to just do it with that one. That's how I'm going to do. But if you want to do it like that, you can mess around. And then you can just basically set the cannon's um, sprite renderer to be higher up. So let's say 7. And then the handle's always going to be attached to the player. Just about messing around with this part to get it how you want it. But in this case, obviously, it does look a bit weird because of that there. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, just about messing around with that one to get it how you want it to be. Alright, so, now we've got that. What we want to do is, obviously, get it so that our crosshair, if it disappears, 
and it starts acting weird because if we go really far off screen it's going to affect uh, the movement the speed of the rotation so we're going to set that up next okay and in fact actually before we do that what we can actually do to fix the uh, problem with the cannon we can actually add a hand let's call it player hand an empty game object and we'll give it just a an icon you know purple okay we can put that just past the player and then instead of following the player we can follow the player's hand hand and we'll hit play and that should then be working you can see that how it looks better the cannon just stays with that and it's not going to go into the middle of the player there we go okay so let's get the uh, reset position working okay so to do this what we're going to do is on the player hand we are going to add an fsm we'll call it uh, again get hand pos okay and we'll put get position and again we want to get a 2d position so we're going to get position 2d and we're going to store it in a vector 2 every frame a new one we'll call it let's call it hand pos okay So we'll do that. So every, when we click, the crosshair is going to jump back to here. So on the crosshair, we're going to add a new FSM. We'll call this one, uh, let's call it reset aim. I don't know why I hit an N. Reset aim. Okay. And we want two states. We're going to add transition finished onto both of them. Okay, we'll call it uh, uh, on reset click and say set position. Okay, and on here we're going to do a get key, uh, yeah, get key down. There we go. And we want to get the mouse button. And I believe mouse one. Send event finished. And then we're going to say set position. Okay, it's got a red box to click that and it will add what we need. Okay, and position, we're going to set that to. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay, sorry, not that one. I want to make sure set position, so not that rect position one. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, vector two and set it to hand POS. And then. Uh, next frame event just to make sure that it's going to jump between the two events okay so we'll do finished so let's hit play and hopefully when we uh, right click you see it jumps back now if you don't want it to be there what you can do is uh, create another empty object here and call it reset point and we can just move the get the hand position from here and remove it from there in a second we can just pop it in here basically its component is new and we'll get that and remove the component from there Okay, and we can then move that to where you want it to be. So if you want the crosshair to start like there, 
that's fine. If you want to add a tag, you can. So we hit play. Obviously, that's not going to move. I made a mistake there. We don't want it there. We want that reset point on the cannon. And right, there we go. If you look, it will move. We right click, and there we go. Now, the speed isn't the fastest, so you can make it faster. So we can make the movement speed of our crosshair faster. And let's say 10. I think maybe 10 should be okay. Again, it's just mess around a bit how you want it, like how sensitive you want it to be. All right. So next, all we need to do is to get it to fire. Okay. And what we're going to do here is on the cannon, we are going to add an empty game object. We'll call it target point. And we'll give it a tag. Now, you're going to want to make sure that this is going to be off camera. So obviously, if the camera will be following your player, this will be better. Because once the uh, ammo hits this point, it's going to destroy itself. Okay, and then we're going to want to create a bullet. So I'll pop this here and call this bullet. All right, and on this, what we're going to do, first of all, is on target point, we want to add a position. So we're going to uh, target POS. And the same here, we're going to call it uh, get POS. And again, get position 2D. And we're going to store in a vector 2. Let's call it target POS. And then we're going to choose every frame. So on our bullet, we want to have um, a, let's say, a circle collider. And we can say is a trigger. It's fine. And that's probably all we need. We want to give it a tag as well. So let's call it a bullet. And we'll tag that as a bullet. And then what we want to do first is um, <clears throat> add two FSMs or two states with a finished transition. Okay, on this one is move towards target. And then here we'll say clean up. So on this one, we want to do a tween position. Um, normally, if you're shooting this in one direction, like straight, or up and down, you could use a set velocity. Uh, but because we're going to be moving in like circular motion, we want to use a different thing to make it simpler. So we want a tween position. <clears throat> and on here, we're going to leave everything except where it says world position. We're going to tick this here and choose globals, convert, and then target POS. Start delay is zero. Easing quad, we're going to do linear because we want it to be the same speed at the whole time. And then this is how long we want it to take to get from point A to point B. And we'll say 0.5. You can mess around. You can make it slower. You can make it faster. Then I'm finished. Uh, we're just going to do a destroy self. In real time, let's say, just tick both. There's no children to it, so you have to do that. And then we will drag that in here to make a prefab. Which is our, uh, where is it? Bullet here. Okay. 
Now we need to get the cannon firing. So last thing we need to do, we're going to add one more FSM. And we're going to call this fire. Okay, and we want to get two finished states. Well, actually, we're going to want more. Yeah, well, actually, two should be fine. So we're going to do a click fire as we're using the mouse. And then a create bullet. So this one we want to get key down. And we're going to use mouse button zero because that's our uh, left click. Send event finished. That dog coming up on here? No, okay. Sorry, there's a, a dog barking like crazy outside, but luckily you shouldn't hear it. <clears throat> okay, so create bullet. So we're going to create object. And then we want a weight. Okay, so we'll put create object first. <clears throat> So game object, this is where we're going to choose our prefab. So we're going to click on the icon here and choose assets. And I'll choose bullet. And the one here now, I can actually delete that one there. Okay. Bullet and then spawn point. I'm going to choose my fire point here. And then the rest of it is all just left. Um, like that. But here, real time, we want to say how long between clicking the fire button we want to wait. So let's say 0 0.5. So half, every half a second, we can fire a bullet. Okay, and let's test it out. Okay, so we set our cannon. And you can see, you can see the cannonball and firing. And when it reaches the target point here, it will then destroy itself. Now I say you want to make sure because if we move here, if you look, the bullet disappears here now. So if that's what you want, that's fine. But there we go. We can now aim. We can reset our position and shoot. And that is it. Uh, a bit of a long one for this one. But it's quite a few things to go over. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Um, if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And yeah, until next time, 8-Bit Squid out.